Hello Nigeria, hello world. You're watching Plus TV Africa and the program is Sports Business with Orufor Ezaga. We're reaching you live from our studios in Lagos. This is yet another exciting package that um, we have for you lined up. Today we're going to be talking about sports broadcasting. That's where the money really is in sports business. And I have a fantastic guest to talk about that and enlighten us on how, what we need to do in Nigeria to um, take advantage of that huge opportunity in the global industry. We're also going to be talking to a young lady who is doing um, some community work through unicycling. Uh, she's trying to engage young people in our community and she's um, do, reaching out to them and um, incentivizing them with unicycling um, skills. First on the program is going to be Mr. Remy Adipi Ogunpiton, sorry. Uh, he's the founder and uh, co executive consultant to IBST Media. After speaking with Mr. Ogunpiton, we're going to speak to the young lady, Miss Favor Oko, who is the CEO of the, of the Kelechi Unicycling Academy. So that's the program that we have lined up for you. But first, before we get right down to that, let's talk a bit about what has happened in our football industry in the weekend to now. You know, we, we were involved in two, well, dramatic episodes. There was the one in the league where Rangers hosted Ayimba in the biggest game of the MPFL season. Both teams needed the points. Rangers, because they're leading the table, and they were leading the table two points ahead of Ayimba, and Ayimba because they needed to catch Rangers. It was a monumental fixture. The stadium was packed to the rafters. And, you know, people, it was gladdening news for us who promote the MPFL, because we're beginning to see that fans are warming up to the MPFL once again, and the momentum is building, all right? Packed 20,000 uh, capacity stadium, fans were, pay, were made to pay between 500 Naira and 10,000 Naira. So this is not a question of the gates were thrown open. These fans had to buy tickets, and it was huge. The club would have made a lot of money, which is something gladdening to us on this program. We like to talk about the money. The clubs would have made a lot of money and the league would have, you know, been positioned in such a way that they can benefit from this going forward in terms of sponsorship, in terms of broadcast um, rights and, and the like. So, yeah, the Nigerian league is, is becoming bigger. But unfortunately, you know, the game ended in controversy. Um, a, lot, a late, late penalty was given to Rangers International and the Ayimba players... Uh, refused it. They walked out of the pitch and then the fans invaded the pitch. But since then, uh, you know, swift action has been taken by the league uh, managers. Aimba has been fined 10 million naira uh, and then Rangers too were fined 5 million naira for their own uh, complicity in, the, in terms of, uh, you know, how they didn't manage the crowds well. But there we are, you know, 10 million from Aimba. 5 million from, um, from Rangers. Uh, so that's on the one hand what happened with our club football. And then on the other hand, our Super Eagles played uh, two qualifiers. First was against South Africa, which they drew in Uyo 1-1. And then they went off to, um, to Cote d'Ivoire, where they played Abidjan, where they played um, uh, the Republic the Benin Republic, and Benin Republic won by two goals to one. Now, that puts us in a very precarious position. You know, we are now like uh, second from the bottom in the group. We now have to win all of our matches if we want to have any chance to qualify for the World Cup. Now, here's the thing. A lot of people are really upset that Nigeria is not going to the World Cup because we tend to look at the World Cup and the Africa Cup of Nations in Nigeria as where the business really is. So they are really complaining that this is going to be huge business losses for, for the Nigerian media. But is that really the case? Because we know that, for instance, 
that club football is where the business really is. The game between Aimba and, um, and Rangers, for instance, dwarfed the game between, between Nigeria and South Africa and the game between Nigeria and um, Benin Republic. Now, guess what? Your national team only gets to play like 11 to 15 matches every year. Your national league, the top flight of your national league plays about 380 matches every year. Each one, of those matches, each one of those matches almost as big as your national team games if your league is successful. All right, So we need to learn to focus on our domestic league because that's where the real money is. And even the NFF must wake up to its responsibility in the, responsibilities in this regard. It's not about going to play the World Cup. If you go to play the World Cup you, and you win it, you probably get $40 million or $30 million. If your league is well run, you get media rights alone in the region of maybe $200, $300, $400 $400 million in one season. And Mr. Yemi Ogunpito is going to be talking about that. That's why he's in the studio. You need to get your games on television because when you do, you scale them from just 20,000 people in the stadium to 20 million or even 8 billion people across our planet. We're going to go on a short break. So you can you know, get some water or invite a friend to watch the program with you or do whatever you want to do so that you can really settle down for the next 45 to 50 minutes as we give you, you know, sports business uh, and interest you in a way that would, it, would, either, would make you see the sports industry in a new way. And it could create an opportunity or two for you or your organization. Today we have a very, very uh, important guest in the studio. Uh, he's going to be talking about sport broadcast media, you know, and all of the money that's involved in this huge industry that globally is, is uh, estimated to be worth about $15 billion, or nearing $15 billion. Uh, welcome to the studio, Remy. Hi, Kenneth. How are you? I'm very, very well, you know. Uh, well, well, we're hoping to, to hear a lot from you today that um, would excite you know, people in, in, in the sports industry in Nigeria, investors in the sports industry in Nigeria, and let them see opportunities that's in broadcast media. Because we often don't take broadcast media, broadcast media as seriously as we should, but that's where the real money is, you know. So what do you think, what, what's the situation in the, in the industry? Do you think private broadcasting is something that we're alive to now? I think um, local investors, um, broadcasters and players in that field um, understand really mm -hmm. the lucrative nature of sports business mm -hmm. and the opportunities which present themselves. Um, I think the, if we look at the uptake yeah. uh, on local television of things like um, English Premier League, um, NBA, mm. uh, things like uh, UEFA and all of those things, we see that Nigerians are very, very, very interested in sports. Okay. So there is, an there is an opportunity, a local opportunity, to capture similar attention from local sports mm. if it is uh, properly packaged if we can deliver the production quality, mm, mm. if we can deliver the, the values, the essence, the excitement mm. Mm. of sports, then it can be profitable. Mm. Um, I think the question is, how do we do that? Mm. You know, what does that take? Um, Kenneth, you know quite easily that sports mm. is mostly driven by sponsorship, yeah. broadcast rights, mm. um, merchandising, mm. Mm. and all the various activities. You know, in fact, tickets, sales of tickets actually come at the bottom of the yeah, food yeah, chain. Yeah. You know, when you look at broadcast rights, mm. you look at image rights for the sportsmen, mm. you look at the merchandising, and you look at all those, other, you know, like hospitality packages and all of those things. Those are the things that actually deliver the revenue. Mm. 
uh, I feel that one of the challenges we have is that we are always focusing on the big on the big numbers okay. on the big events mm. on the things that are at the top mm. and as a result I don't think we've really looked at the opportunity holistically mm. um, and I think once we start to look at those opportunities holistically which I'm sure we'll discuss later mm. we will start to see that there is a lot of opportunity mm. But the question is, how do we exploit it? Okay, so let's even look at the, the reality on ground, yeah? And take the MPFL as, as, a, um, as an example. In the MPFL, there is, we have two broadcasters, yeah? There's a streaming partner called Propel Africa, yeah. Propel Sports Africa. And then there is the television partner, um, Star Times. Star Times is Chinese, yeah? Propel Sports is British. And I'm thinking, where are the Nigerians? Where is Remy Ogun Piton, for instance? Where is, his, where is IBST media? What are these guys seeing that we're not seeing? You know, the, the thing is that, is, is that um, in terms of the investment mm. that is required, and what you are talking about is exactly what I'm alluding to, mm. that that is the top of the pyramid, mm. isn't it? Mm. You know, when you look at Nigerian Premier League, mm. you look at rights for the <laughs> Eagles, and then, well, mm. that's the top of the pyramid. Yeah. Okay, but um, you think they are at the bottom? There, there, are, the there are lots of opportunities. Okay. Um, I, I will try to talk about one or two of them, but I don't want to give much away because that will be giving away proprietary okay. IP and intellectual information that my competitors can yeah. go look at. Yeah. But yeah. Let, me, let me just say that I don't believe that the opportunities are always at the top I of the think. food chain okay and the reason i don't believe that mm. at this moment mm. is the kind of investment that is required mm. is huge mm. and you have to be in it for a long time for 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 a long term you're not uh, you know you've got to put down that money and you've got to really continue to invest to build it you've got to be patient yes patient yeah you've got to build it mm. Um, and that is also driven by sponsorship, mm. okay? If we look at the Nigerian economy now, today, and you look at the shelf, you go into the shelf and you look at what people need to spend their money on, am I going to go to watch a football match or buy credit for my phone? Am I going to yeah. pay for streaming or pay for my children's school fees mm. and food. So there's a lot of demands on the end user, mm. the viewer, in terms of how they spend their money. As an investor, mm. if as a Nigerian, I want to invest in that kind of top of the pyramid kind of uh, opportunity, mm. I've got to go to the local bank because it's going to be hard for me to get local sponsors. But is there anything wrong with that? If you have a business plan that, that is... Is, is... There's everything wrong with it because I cannot do that business mm. and borrow money and pay interest at 28%. Yeah. I can't. There's no way I'm going to succeed. And there's no way I'm going to compete with the Chinese mm. or with the foreigners. Because the Chinese can go to the bank in China mm. and they can get a million dollars at 1.5% and build it into Nigeria and change it at 1,500 naira to the dollar. Mm. The British guy can go to the bank in the UK and collect, in, can collect a loan at 3% over 10 years. Mm. And then he can bring the money and he can invest it so they can afford to play the long game. Mm. Here in Nigeria, it's very, very, very difficult. So we have to start thinking differently. Differently, yeah. So you think that for the local players, you probably want to be looking at smaller opportunities and building up from there? Yes, I, I, I think so. Mm. I think you know, there's quite a few things that we are working on. But let me give you some examples mm. of some things that people have tried. Mm. For instance, if we look at our universities, mm. our universities compete against each other in all kinds of sports, mm. athletics, football, volleyball, mm. there's the Nuga games, mm. they play each other in hockey, mm. uh, basketball, and all of those kind of things. 
Okay? Then, at the state level, all our states have different teams. If you go to Rope Park, you see them basketball. If you go to Joss, you see them playing basketball in the, in the, sports, in the, in the sports council. So, there's a lot of activities going on at the local level and at the local government level also. So the question is this, is that if you want to enter at that level, mm. the barrier is very low. Mm. But do you have the properties, do you have the sports properties to push? Yeah, but we can, those are the kind of things that we can build. Let me give you, an, let me give you a typical example. Okay. Okay. Imagine I decided to do a pop-up tele television a table tennis tournament mm. okay what do i require for that a table tennis table a net and some bats mm. and to actually broadcast that mm. i really don't need much investment okay. in fact to tell you if i wanted to actually cover that kind of thing and broadcast it and stream it. I don't even have to broadcast it and stream it uh, mm. for a day. I wouldn't need more than 500,000 naira to do that. Okay. Do you understand? So I get my table, I set it up somewhere, and I build a buzz and entertainment around it. Mm. Pop up table tennis tournament. Mm. And people in the area, you'd have done your prima, they all come and they play, and you know how nigerians love watching people playing table tennis yeah. it's not professional it's not anything but it's it's sports and it allows everybody it's community based you know the point you make here uh, yeah i find it interesting you know and you know why i think that one of the problems we have with sports business in nigeria is that we we tend to overthink what sports business is. Yes. Do you understand? We think it's some grand thing. It has to be like you know something like the Super Bowl or or the Champions League or something like that. You know, but sports business is actually just fun. You know, you create a product. It's like it's a it's like a product. Yeah. Yeah. You you know you create something something small like the table tennis idea you 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 have spoken about. You create that. Get an audience to watch it. Put it on on television, stream it to millions of people, and you, and you have your product. Do you understand? So it doesn't have to be, you know, something we, ha we have to overthink and, you know, we can't create these things like- That is there. exactly, you know, w what I'm saying in terms of that, you know, in terms of the sports, we mm. have the sports in Nigeria. Mm. In terms of the talent, we have it in Nigeria. Mm. Now, if you look at sponsorship money mm. nowadays, if you want to go to a sponsor with something that is big ticket, mm. you're going to have a challenge. But if you go to a sponsor with something that is very elemental, mm. grassroots, mm. can garner viewership, mm. okay? Mm. And they can tie their brand to it without paying too much for money for it. And everybody wants to watch it. And you can take it from community to community. My brother, Okay, so tell me, where does what's the what's the advantage of of streaming when you're looking at income generation? What do you bring to the picture? I think for streaming and even linear TV. Yeah, what, what, I think I think you know, I I, I have stopped. Um, linear TV is part of the mix, mm. but from my perspective, for quite a long time, mm. uh, I've looked at it as something that is at the bottom of the mix. Okay. Okay. How's that? Because the people that consume content, mm. if you look at the demographic of Nigeria, okay, mm. and you look at the fact that you know, the majority of the population in this country is below the mm. age of 30. 30 yeah. All right. How do they consume content? They consume their smartphone. content on the phone. Yeah, smartphone. Okay. Yeah. And they want content that is exciting. Mm that is shareable. Mm. They need content that they can share with their friends. Oh, mm. did you see this? Mm. And all of that kind of thing. So for me, streaming platforms actually provide the kind of reach that a sponsor is looking for. Mm. Because linear television in Nigeria is fragmented. 
But, but isn't, it, isn't it global? Streaming is taking over. Yeah, now, yeah but I mean, well, I mean, I'm just trying to respond to your question. It's, okay. frag, you know, it's fragmented. Mented, okay. Yeah? You have the state TV stations. You have the state NTA television stations. You have the private TV stations and all of those kind of things. And we've been dealing with this issue of uh, digital switchover now for more than 15 years. That has mm -hmm. never happened. Mm -hmm. Maybe if we had had a successful mm -hmm. digital switchover with all the billions that have been spent, we wouldn't be talking like this now because you would have a lot of stations that people can watch all over Nigeria okay. on the platform. But we don't have that now. So we're still dealing with a broadcast environment that is terrestrial and it's not and it's not digital it's analog mm. you know because mm. that is what is really going on but if we can develop properties little little properties because you can imagine for instance let's just stick with this table tennis idea mm. this weekend i take it to Moshe. next weekend i take it to agege mm. The following weekend, I take it to Ali Mosho. Mm. The following weekend, I take it to uh, Ikeja. The following weekend, I take it to Agbara. I'm in Badagri. I'm in Ikorodu. I'm in Ekpe. And you're building up like and you're building it up like that. And at the end of it, you're bringing all those different communities together to come and play the finals. Mm. They're not table, table, table tennis players that are playing with the state. These are guys off the street girls off the street mm. who are yeah, showcasing their talent and everything and you build that community around it can you imagine if you have a broadcast platform that they can switch onto and watch it and you can build content around it backstories about who they are where they're from how did they start to uh, play tennis mm. you know who is their mom who is their dad what are the challenges they have in life why did they get involved in it and you start to build all these kind of content around that thing something as small as that believe me put two years into that and i'll tell you what you won't be spending the kind of money that they're spending to and you, and you've, been making, you've been making a lot of money i'll tell you yeah. me, i'll give you an example of some championship in um, singapore um, it's called the one championship singapore is a country of five million people or thereabout and they developed this product it's a martial arts champion, uh, championship and as of last year they got 463 million, 68 million people around the world to watch it. Now, just imagine, and this is what blows my mind about broadcast media. Imagine you can develop a product in Nigeria and stream it or put it on linear TV. And you have a million people, one million people who are prepared to watch that, enjoy that experience and pay you a dollar for it. Yeah, that's a million dollars. That's not small money. And you can do that across different sports, different scales. You know, so sports business is big business. And central to all of this is broadcast media. We're going to take a very short break. And when we return, Mr. Good Peter is going to talk to us more about, you know, um, what to expect for, from broadcasters, from the broadcast media, especially the production companies in Nigeria. Is this, so, is it a, is this an area you can play in? Hang on for us for just a minute, and when we return, the business continues. <music> Welcome back to the program. It's Sports Business with Orufo Ezagam. In the studio with me is Remy Ogunpiton. He's the, the, cons the chief consultant for IBST Media. IBST Media is a the big media, um, broadcast media organization. All right, so Remy, you know, how does, how does a young man or anybody watching now um, think of, you know, the broadcast media as an opportunity? You know, you're saying it's very expensive, very expensive to get in and all of that. But today, people can create content with their smartphones. They can they can record the content and stream it. So maybe it's not that big after all. I mean, AI is coming. Is there any opportunity for the small player in Nigeria? Mm -hmm. I think we need to differentiate between uh, sports content from the perspective of um, uh, yeah. personalization yeah. and sports from the point of uh, adversary type of sports, which is 
tournament. Me against Spectator, you. Yes, uh, you Spectator. know, the John against Peter. Yeah, yeah, Arsenal yeah, against yeah, him. Yeah, there's a difference. Yeah. Okay. Um, but the two can be merged. Mm. Okay. As an individual, there are a lot of sports stories mm. around us that we yeah. don't explore. I'll give you an example. I like I always like to use examples. Um, I'm off to Uganda in about 10 days. And I'm on a sports mission. Mm. In Uganda, in a particular area of Uganda, mm. they developed something over the past five years. The same way that the Japanese developed sumo wrestling, which is the biggest sport in Japan. In Uganda, they developed something, and they call it mud wrestling. Mm. Okay? Where people, where they go, they create a ring with mud, and they wrestle in wrestling. it. And they have their own rules. You know, something similar to our own local Dambe. Dambe. Is, yeah? it, is it, is it um, unique to Uganda? It's unique to Uganda. Okay. Yeah? And we were approached by an international broadcaster mm. who is very interested in okay. telling that story. And we've been following it up. And over the years, they've even developed an academy yeah. where young people go there to train. For mod wrestling. For mod wrestling. And then they wrestle. And it's got to a stage now where they even have sponsors. And winners get paid. Yeah, yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. So there are many, many ways in which we can look at our sports and get people involved not only from the perspective of an individual but from even production companies like yeah. us yeah. who don't have the money to go and buy rights for english premier league for nba yeah. for pay-per-view for all the fights this saturday there is the mixed martial arts yeah, yeah. which is going on in abuja that's the, the one by... Uh, AKO. Yeah, okay. AKO, I've invested a lot of money in that license. Yeah. And they're working with Kamara, Kamaru, Kamaru Usman. Usman. We're going to Abuja for the first time. You're filming it? Yeah, we do the production, the okay. broadcast production for it. Who streams it? Uh, it goes directly to Super Sports. Okay. Directly to Super Sports. Hmm. So you find that there are people like that Rayan is the guy that is running the thing, mm. but he's investing his money and he's providing work yeah, for Nigerians yeah, yeah. and he's getting sponsorship. But then at the same time too, the fighters that are coming from all over Africa, there are people in those countries who are doing stories about them with their phone, who oh, these are your trains, mm -hmm. da -da 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 -da, and they send it and we edit it mm -hmm. and we put it into the... But that, that's, an, you know, funny that you say that because I think that Storytelling is really what drives sports it is. in the world. You know yes. what I mean? This, when it, two Rangers are going to play shooting stars next week, it's not about these two clubs just playing football. It is how is it going to affect the dynamics of the championship race, you know, the title race. You know, things like that. It goes beyond that. Who are the guys who are, who are going to deliver for ICC or deliver for... Yeah. Deliver. You know those sort of stories? The, the history. Yeah. How many times have they met? Jonathan, what has happened when they met? They start. Who are the yeah. who are the famous players? Who are the players of the teams yeah. that have always been at each other's throat? Yeah. Like Vieira and mm. Keane in mm. Manchester United and Arsenal. Mm. All those kind of stories. Mm. All of those stories go into building up the atmosphere, mm. building up the making it electric mm. and keeping you glued so that when it starts, your perspective. It's not only watching the match, but you're watching the match as an informed spectator. spectator yeah. You know, so these are some of the things. And, 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 you know, and, and I look around and I just see, for me, in Nigeria, mm. I see lots of oppo I see mm. opportunities in sports. The sports industry is everywhere. A ocean, I think. I see, sport, yeah. I see opportunities in sports every, everywhere. In every corner yeah. that I look. Um, the challenge that people like me have yeah. is that we only have one brain, one mm. mind. Yes. Your pocket is has a certain limit. Yeah. And you cannot be amorphous. You cannot be in 10 places at the same time. Yeah. So I think what needs to happen is that we've got to start looking at how we can focus on and, and win the little battles. Yeah. Uh, you know, win this battle, win that battle here. So that as we move forward, we are, we are well positioned to actually 
look at the war and say we have a strategy for winning for, the war. For, yeah. Anyway, so um, lastly, yeah, uh, sports. We saw uh, music coming. Nigerians excelled, um, and then movies went to Netflix, the musicians, Spotify, and all of that. From what you have said now, it, it's almost looking like the local players can compete at that level. Um, is, that, is, that, is it realistic to imagine that maybe someday a Nigerian company can become like the, the, the broadcast partner of the, of the league? And well, you know, it's, you know, we have examples that we can look at mm. of organizations in Africa that have tried to play at that level. Mm. Um, we need to be honest with ourselves. Mm. Um, the last African Cup of Nations were the, li the, the whole uh, license and rights was bought by a company, an African company in Togo, which yeah. you are very much aware of. Yeah. And you know what happened yes, when they tried yes, to do yes. it. You know, it, it was a bit of a mess. Mm. Okay? Um, we've had organizations in Nigeria also that have bought rights. Yeah. The defunct High TV, yeah. one of them, when they tried to go up against Super Sports yeah. and uh, and uh, the, D uh, the the DSTV Mnet uh, yeah. conglomerate, yeah. Um, and then we need to understand that when we're dealing on the international level, also we're dealing with people like uh, Sky Sports, Sky Sports, the big players. Yeah, you're dealing with ESPN. Okay. Now, now you have the likes of Facebook, yeah, Amazon, yeah. The all, of them, have all of them of are playing in sports. Apple, yeah. if you go to Apple TV now, they've got about six or seven channels yeah. for sports. Yeah. So for me, I think the only way that we can play in that kind of environment is that you have to create something that you own, yeah. that they want. Yeah. So what you're saying is, if, if you are in broadcast media, you probably want to create your own or partner somebody, and both of you grow together. Yes. On that note, Mr. Ogunkito, I've called you Remy, I've called you Mr. Ogunkito, I've called you all kinds of names today. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but... You didn't call me bros <laughs> before we started. <laughs> <laughs> when I told you my age, you ran. <laughs> Anyway, I can't, you I can't, can't do it. I, I can't say it publicly, but you look fantastic. Yes. I, uh, as, they said, as somebody said when he saw me recently, said, I hope I look like that when I'm your age. Right? <laughs> uh, you know. yeah, which is what you told me to. <laughs> 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 it's been nice having you on the program. I'm sure we're going to have more opportunities to, opportunities to engage uh, going forward because it's such a wide topic. Yes, it is. The sports industry is just such a blue ocean in Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. And so, but lastly, just one quick one. If somebody wants to get into broadcast media today, how do you think they should go about it quickly? Uh, I think they've got to identify their niche. Mm. And then they need to do a lot of research. Mm. Talk to people who have been in the game for a long time. Like you? So that they can really understand it. Mm. I've met a lot of people that have money mm. and they'll tell me that I'm setting up a TV station, I'm going to do this and mm. I'm going to do that and I visit them and I look at what they're doing, I listen to them and out of respect I keep quiet because really they, <laughs> don't, they don't even have a clue. Yeah, what to do, yeah. Yeah, they don't even have a clue. A lot of people think that uh, media and broadcasting is all about equipment. Mm. You know, have a studio, have lights, have mm. cameras, mm. and all of those kind, kind of things. No, it's not. It goes way beyond that. No, it's, it's way beyond that. Mm. You know, broadcasting is all about content. Mm. You, you might just be sitting in your house, and all you're doing is aggregating content. Mm. And you don't have a single camera. You don't yeah, have a control yeah, room. Yeah. All you're doing is aggregating content, yeah, yeah. and you're pushing it out there. Once you understand what your customers and mm. your viewers need, mm. when they need it, how they need it, what platforms they need it mm. on, and you can create a value proposition around it that, mm. that enthralls and excites them mm. and advertisers, mm. then you are, you are spot on. So don't start with equipment mm. and I want to buy this house, mm. I want to convert mm. it. Mm. Look at your content. Mm. What is your content plan? How what you is your marketing plan? On a sustainable basis. Uh, that is the yeah, issue. Yeah. 
Anyways, Mr. Ogunkito, nice having you on the program. Thank you very much. And we look forward to um, uh, more engagements in the future. Thank you. Um, so, viewers, um, you've been listening to Remy Ogunkito, the consultant and founder of um, consultant to and founder of IBST Limited. We're going to go on a short break now. When we return, we'll go, we're going to be speaking with the young Miss Favor Kilechi Oko about um, the unicycling idea she has and how she's using it to impact her community. So give us a short moment and don't go away. When we return, the business continues. You're welcome back to the program. It's Sports Business with me, Urufo Ezaga. And we're you're watching Plus TV Africa, and we're reaching you live from our studios in Lagos. Um, with me in the studio today to talk about um, unicycling and um, what her academy is doing in her community is Miss Favor Oko. How are you, Fa I'm Favor? I'm very fine. Thank you for having me on your show today. It's, it's, it's good to have you. You're doing a good thing, yeah? So um, yeah. I want to find out from you exactly okay. what the whole business of your your Kelechi Unicycle Academy. Academy is about, All right. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much for having yeah. me on your show. Uh, my name is Favor yeah. Oku Kelechi. I'm the founder and head coach of Kelechi Unicycle Academy. Yeah. It's an academy where I train kids and young adults on the art of unicycle, mm. which is by extension a circus academy. Mm. So a unicycle is a very dynamic vehicle which can be expressed in different ways it has a sport dimension it has the artistic dimension where we go into circles mm. and including things like juggling and other hybrids mm. the sport dimension is where we use it for competitions so it's ramp it's very um selling in the asian world at the moment because mm. they have a lot of competitions on it mm. the 100 meter unicycle flatland unicycle a lot of Investment has gone so big in the Asian world about this unicycling. Mm. It's gradually coming this way, and we expect that by the time it's been introduced into the Olympics and other bigger sport bodies, we'd have been able to raise some Nigerian athletes who can represent the country in the sport. Okay, so I saw some videos of you yeah. and young children doing this thing. What's, what's the reception been like? Okay, the reception has been mixed, though. Over time. Mm. It was, there was this, people were surprised because this is something that's very rampant in this part of the world. Mm. Then it, it metamorphosed into something that was widely received because mm. they now got to understand that, wow, this is natural. At mm. first, the reception was more like, is this some kind of magic? Is this some kind of voodoo? Mm. Is there? Because <laughs> they're like, walking around me, mm. it was like, they got, they gave them mixed feelings. Mm. But over time, they began to, adapt to it and the reception has been wonderful mm. and so where do you see this going is it just community engagement do you one day see it as becoming do you represent anybody in nigeria for instance is there a unicycling world body what, what how do you intend to sustain this okay so there's a world body for unicycling mm. actually there's even a global competition, which is known as Unicorn, mm. the Unicycle Convention mm. in Birmingham. Mm. So, on the bigger picture, mm. there is really a light at the end of the tunnel. Mm. So, at the moment, you know, whatever is huge starts small. Mm. So, at the moment, it's a community impact thing. For me, mm. I see it as a value, as a way to impact my immediate environment. Mm. It's a foundation. Mm. So, we see it as like, these kids, these young adults, mm. give them a place to channel their youthful energy, a place to put in this resource. And it also brightens their mind. Because mm. having to navigate on how to operate this, how to work on this, and how to do a lot of tricks on it, it really expands their mind. Because sometimes I get to ask for feedback, for reviews from their parents, from mm. those who have tried it, and the feedback has been amazing. Mm. I get feedback like, they've been more engaging, it has made them to be more versatile, make them to be smarter, mm. make them to be able to multitask, especially the juggling part, because we also introduce unicycle juggling. Mm. The juggling part broadens their mind, they can multitask, they can do a whole lot of things 
that they weren't previously able to do mm. due to the brain expansion it has given to them. Okay, so how expensive is, is a unicycle? Okay, so a unicycle, brand unicycle is around um, $220 and $200. In Nigeria, how much would that cost? In Nigeria, if you are getting a brand new unicycle, when you convert that to the current dollar rate, <laughs> you are looking at like um, 150k to 200k. Do they, do they have people who sell unicycles in Nigeria? In, uh, yes, we have some people who sell, although the best way to get for someone who has an academy, mm. it's not advisable to buy it in one piece because mm. it's that you're going to be bankrupt. So it's something like I order, mm. and when I get it in bulk, it comes with a lot of discounts yeah, with time and all. Then so sometimes, yes, I assemble myself mm. and it's able to I get it in a cheaper rate through that. Okay, so this is not apparently, this is not a this is not easy business. You need, yeah, it's not you easy need business. capital to do it. Capital. Right? And um, so, how do you do you get any support now from, say, brands because of your engagement? I'm, I'm sure brands will be happy you are engaging young people. Uh, do you have any such support or do you yes. have any plans to? Over support? time, the Unicycle is self funded, the academy. Over time, some brands have been generous enough oh, to. The academy? Self Sponsored, self-sponsored by, by me, yes. Because mm. aside from doing this, I have a corporate job. I'm a cabin crew, mm. so it's a passion for me. Mm. I wish to give back to my society. I wish to impact on people. Because mm. for myself, I define success as not just your financial accumulation, mm. but how much lives are you able to touch, how mm. much value are you able to give back. Mm. I see success as a big umbrella where. The financial aspect is there, and mm. some other means of calculating it, the, which is for me value impacting in people's lives. Okay. So over time, some brands have been generous, like Razo Grenadine. They've been generous, and some brands, um, Infinix, recently had me on their ambassadorial uh, package. So I did a few ads for them as a video vixen and. It was a lovely experience. Okay, so you've had a bit of corporate a bit support. of corporate support. support. Do you have any competitions that you you know in in your academy? Do you have in any? my academy, we have a World on Wheels. Mm. We recently, ran out of a competition called World on Wheels. Wheels. Okay, World on Wheels is a special weekend mm. dedicated to non-motorized vehicles. Mm. Bicycle, unicycle, skate, scooter. Mm. It's uh, this year's theme was ending the climate crisis through sport. Mm. So over time, the emission from motorized vehicles has been having an impact on the ozone layer, which I mm. believe it's, it's it's a topic everybody already knows about. And mm. there has been different efforts from different people to try to reduce this ozone layer emission mm. um, deflection. And from our own end, as sportsmen, as athletes. We try to encourage people to look towards non-motorized vehicles. For instance, you're going for a short distance. Mm -hmm. Instead of using a car, you can easily use a bicycle, a unicycle, a scooter, mm -hmm. a skate. Those little efforts for me, you, and so many other people would actually reduce the ozone layer deflection. Mm. Okay, so um, what, who's your target really? You know, are you targeting young people? Or old people, or everybody. I mean, it's, it's um, who, where do you intend? Because when you're, you're looking at targets, you're looking at where am I going to make money from to sustain this, right? Mm -hmm. So you could target children to reach the adults, because if you target the children, the adults is. I involved the adult, indirectly. Yeah. Yes. Because when you're working adults. with kids, yeah, yeah. you involve the but adults. But then you can also target the adults and say, you know, make this thing a. Old, you old people come and be using this to exercise or, or find a new challenge in life which basically makes you feel young again. You know, do you have a, any specific target? Okay, in so uh, the academy has been for young people, young mm. adults, kids. Recently, since the World on Wheels event, mm. I've had a lot of uh, approach from older people mm. who wish to find a means to exercise. Mm. Because some of our jobs recently, they make us redundant. You are sitting in one position, mm -hmm. you are not able to exercise. And medically, it's been advised to engage in exercise. Mm. So 
the club we are looking at having a section, or let me say a segment for adults, which we, would, we are introducing bicycle at the mm. moment. Mm. So over time, the adults who are able to cope and wish to try out unicycle are welcome. Okay, so welcome if, if somebody is interested in what you're saying okay. now, you know, they can, it doesn't matter where they are in Lagos, you can... Yes, you can, doesn't matter where they are. Yeah? Yes. Okay. All right. So, um, we're talking to Miss Kelechi of Favor Oko, and she's telling us about her unicycle um, academy and what she's doing um, in her community. We're going to take a short break, and when we return, you know, we'll continue uh, the business. Welcome back to Sports Business with Oru for Ezaga. It's Plus TV Africa, and uh, we're reaching you live from our studios in Lagos. With me in the studio is Kelechi Oko, and she's talking about her unicycle academy and the experience she has trying to engage young people in her communities. Um, if, if people want to reach you, for instance, okay. uh, how do they go about it? Okay, so we have our contacts on all social media platforms, mm. Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, mm. WhatsApp. Mm. So we also have a direct contact to the office. Mm. Uh, they probably could be displayed during mm. the program. So it can reach us through any of the platform. It's Kelechi Unicycle Academy on Instagram, Kelechi underscore Unicycle underscore Academy. On YouTube, Kelechi Unicycle Academy. On across all platforms. Okay. So basically, if you don't, all you have to do is Google Kelechi Unicycle okay. Academy, and you get different um, yes. different contacts, right? Yes. Um, it's been nice. How long have you been doing this, by the way? A few years. A few years. A few years. Is yeah. About four years there. About the academy has been two years now. Mm. But personally, I've been into it for about four years there. About. How long does it take to master the unicycle? Okay, so it's relative, mm. depending on a number of factors: your mm. availability, mm. your commitments, your drive. Mm. Your um, your level of assimilation. I've and had bravery, yeah, and bravery. I'll yes. Be scared. <laughs> okay, so I've had trainees who mm. took about two months to learn, and I'm like, what's going on? Mm. And I've had trainees who took just like a week or less. I've had two special trainees. Mm. Uh, Shane was one of them. He learned in just very few days, about three days. Mm. And the other one is David Adeyemi, mm. one of my recent trainees. I was mm. really impressed by his performance. Mm. He learned in a very short period of time, mastered this art so fast, I was very impressed. Okay. Does it matter that you can ride the bicycle? Is it, is it a plus or a negative? It's a plus. Okay. If you can ride a bicycle, that means you already understand the art of balance. Because unicycle basically tries on the art of balance mm. and the angle of gravity. Okay. Are you thinking of doing a competition or coming up your, with your own unicycle competition at some point? Yes. Yeah. I'm thinking of that. I'm actually working towards that, like a unicycle marathon, myself mm. and my coach, mm. the person who trained me. Mm. We are looking at working on a unicycle marathon competition. Mm. We are trying to reach out to brands mm. to sponsor this because there are quite a handful of people in Nigeria now who are able to do this. Because mm. uh, when we first approached the Nigerian Federation of Cyclists, Bicycle, mm. the, their major constraint was how many people do this. Mm. So if we pull up a competition for them or pull up a slot for them in the National Sports Festival. Mm. What's the participation guarantee? How many percentage? Mm, mm. Can each state have a representative? Mm, mm, mm. But by now, there has been a lot of people engaging in it and I believe uh, in a very short future, there will be quite a number that can pull it up in the National Sports Festival. Okay. Nice talking to you, Kelechi. Um, or favor, Oko. When I had the first guest, I was mixing up his name, and I'm doing the same with you. Maybe I'm getting too old. Mm. But here's the thing. It's been a beautiful program today again. Um, we talked about broadcast media, and we, now we talked about unicycle, uh, unicycling, all right? Uh, we will be coming back again to you next week to talk a bit more about, you know, sports broadcasting from a different perspective, you know? So basically to further, you know, uh, put some meat to the bone that we had um, today. All right, so stick with us. And we're going to have other interesting guests coming on next week as well. 
Stick with us so that you can learn more about sports business. It's a big, wide, open uh, industry in Nigeria, a big, white space. What people will tell you is a blue ocean. All right. Don't stop thinking football, 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 or you know, the, you know, the basic everything that you know everybody's already doing. Think anew, think differently, be innovative. There are many spots in Nigeria that can excite people. Until we meet again next week, um, this is Orufo, as I got saying, um, be productive, be good, and stay safe. <laughs>